Well, this has been a long time. Hello everyone, for those of you who don't know, my name is Justin, and it's been a while since I last made a video. But today I'm back with a video I think you guys might enjoy. Today I'm going to be turning a Raspberry Pi 3 into a classic Amiga, using Amoebian. There are a few things that you need to know before we continue. The Kickstarter ROMs are still covered under copyright, so I'll have a link in the description where you can legally download them. The last thing you'll need are games. If you have any old floppies, you can rip those and use them. Alright, the first thing we need to do is Google search for Amoebian. Once you get to the website here, you can find a lot of information on how to configure it. The first things you should do after installing, um, they have readmes. But what we're going to do is go to the very bottom and we're going to download the image file to image to our SD card. Next thing we're going to download is Win32 Disk Imager. You can just click on the link they have on the website and click download. After that's done downloading, we can go ahead and install that. Now they also have a link to WinRAR on their page, but it's not necessary. You can download it if you like. Their website has 32-bit and 64-bit versions. I always like to unblock my installers and zip files before I run them or extract them. We're going to go ahead and minimize that. And again, I'm just going to unblock this compressed zip file. And then there's our image file that we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and find our image file and select that. The next thing we're going to do is put our SD card in. And this already has me being on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use SD card formatter to go ahead and wipe it and get it ready for imaging. If you didn't know which drive is your SD card, you can see removable disk 14.91 gigabytes. That G is my primary partition. So I'm going to go ahead and select G. I'm just going to name it Amoebian. I'm going to click Format. You can see formatting was successful, and if we go back to disk management, you can see that G is now one big partition. So I'm going to go ahead and select G for me, and I'm going to hit right. Right, successful. I'm going to go ahead and pop this into my Raspberry Pi, but before I do that, um, I'm going to eject it. And uh, just for fun, let's go ahead and find a case on Thingiverse to put our Raspberry Pi in. I'm just going to search for Amiga. There's tons of Amiga models you can find. There is one Amiga case that I found that I like quite a bit. It's based off an Amiga 3000. And this is for the older Raspberry Pi. Uh, but there is a remix that somebody made that will accommodate a 2 and newer. So I'm going to go ahead and download that and throw it over to the printer and get it printing. 
And now I'm going to borrow the Dan Wood method of going to the Google Play Store to purchase the Kickstart ROMs. They're only $1.99 at the time of this recording, and I can just copy them over to a flash drive. All right, so here we are loading into Amoebian. The first thing we're gonna have to do is go ahead and hit quit. This will bring us back to command line interface. I'm gonna go ahead and hit six to go to settings and I'm gonna type in Raspi config. And I'm gonna go ahead and go down to advanced options and expand the file system. This will expand the partition to fill the whole SD card. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on finish and reboot and hit yes. It'll boot us back into this GUI. We're gonna hit quit again. And now we're gonna type four to launch Midnight Commander. Now we're gonna click the slash with the two dots to go back. We're gonna to go to Media and we're gonna click on USB. This will bring us to our flash drive. I'm gonna hit Tab. And that's gonna bring us over to our SD card. And we're gonna go down to Amoebian and Amiga Files and Kickstarts. And you can see I've already copied over my Kickstart ROMs. To go ahead and copy over a ROM, you're going to click on F5, enter for OK, and this is saying it's already there, so I'm going to overwrite it. Now we're going to need to put floppies on, so we're going to go back, click on floppies, and now we'll copy all of our floppies into this directory. After we're done, we're going to hit F10, and it's going to exit. I'm going to go ahead and go to 7 and go to Emulator Setup. By default, the emulator is Amiberry, and I'm going to change this to UAE Forearm. I find this runs the best. I'm going to hit Enter, hit Y for Yes, I'm going to exit that. And then we're going to hit 3 to run Amiga Emulation. We can go to quick start here. I can just click on Amiga 500 plus. I'll go ahead and just give it the two megabyte chip RAM extended configuration. And you can see it's already found my ROM. I found the correct ROM to use. Um, it's already set the RAM. All I have to do now is uh, hit start and see if it's running. And 
and there you go. It's asking for a floppy, so we're going to hit F12 to go back. Now we can go search for our floppy image. Uh, they are .adf files for the Amiga, and if we hit resume, it will go ahead and load the software. Now, it will be a little slow because it's actually emulating the speed of a double density floppy drive. You can increase the speed, but it's recommended to keep it at 100% for compatibility reasons. And uh, you can see I've loaded up Elite here and I can run it as if it was on an Amiga. On the next video, I'm going to show how to install Workbench 3.1 inside the emulator.